All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, uh, my name is Doug Meyer. I'm with uh, FEMA and the Office of National Continuity Programs, Continuity Communications Division. And I've been uh, directed to give you all a presentation on the FNARS program this evening. <clears throat> okay, some of the topics we're going to talk about tonight is what exactly FNARS is, uh, an overview of the program, uh, the program management office responsibilities, the different networks that FNARS utilizes, the test and exercise program that FNARS is involved in. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about each of the networks and the participants that are on those networks. We'll talk about the testing that we do of the network and the purpose of the testing and the procedures. We'll talk about HF ALE uh, a little bit because that's a, a big thing with uh, the FNR system, the automatic link establishment. Do a brief equipment overview and, uh, and I'll give you guys a, a chance to ask any questions and I will answer what I can answer on a public forum. <clears throat> okay, so FNARS is a FEMA national radio system. It's a nationwide high frequency automatic link establishment ALE network for emergency backup communications. It's primarily used for communications between FEMA headquarters, FEMA regions, and the state EOCs, it's emergency operations centers, obviously, uh, during national and or regional emergencies, particularly when other comms are impaired or restricted. Uh, FNR systems in each state and most territory, FNR systems are in each state and most U.S. territories. Again, they're usually in the state emergency operations centers, and usually they're, oper they're operated by EOC employees that uh, we provide training to. <clears throat> the FNAR systems are 1,000 watt Rockwell Collins systems. Uh, generally, the, the antenna systems we're using at the state level are US antenna products, 1942 RT NVIS antennas or the Barker and Williamson BWDI series folded dipole antennas. Uh, we do occasionally use some other ones uh, if you know, the situation uh, merits a different type of antenna being installed for you know, whatever reason, but those are the, the two main ones we use at the state level. <laughs> So, so I don't know. I, I've not done one of these before. I was looking at some of your other videos. Do we just save the Q and A for the end, or do if should I pause if people want to ask anything, or what's the SOP here? Yeah, just go ahead with your presentation, and then after you get done, we'll open it up and uh, take questions and such. Okay. All right. Um, FNARS is an unclassified communication system designed for utilization either preemptively or reactively to any event that compromises or potentially compromises the normal communications infrastructure. The FNARS system includes the following capabilities. It's HF automatic link establishment where the radio is utilized to establish a link to another FNARS radio on the system. Voice capability, voice messages are transmitted via the radio. Text messaging capability, where text messages can be sent to other FNARS stations through the FNARS radio via a workstation. And they also have the ability to provide an interconnect to the telephone line through a telephone patching system. The events and hazards against which FNARS mitigates impacts on FEMA's continuity include natural disasters such as hurricanes, earthquakes, or tornadoes, terrorist attacks, acts of war by foreign powers, uh, large-scale communication infrastructure stress or failure, 
cyber attacks against communication systems or infrastructure, national special security events, and national weather warnings. Uh, FNARS is really kind of a last ditch, um, last option communications when, when everything else is down or not reliable. <clears throat> Okay, FNARS operates independently of terrestrial and space-based infrastructure and serves as a resilient backup continuity communications capability. Uh, not, none of our systems are connected, rely on anything like satellite or are connected to any IP-based systems. They're, they're all pretty much standalone and only outside communication with them is over the HF airwaves. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's standalone network of voice and text data communications capabilities, uh, HF text data and phone patch provide long range, range coverage while requiring minimal infrastructure. Standard FNARS equipment includes HF radios, antennas, and other ancillary devices such as standalone workstations, power amplifiers, and backup power supply units. Okay, uh, an overview of FNARS, the, the mission statement. Uh, FNARS provides the FEMA administrator and executive leadership with resilient voice and messaging capabilities for command, control, and communications, continuity of operations, or COOP, of FEMA assets and resources, and communication, coordination, and collaboration with regional administrators and state or territorial emergency management partners in response to all hazards. FNARS is designated a mission critical communication system with an authority to operate from the Office of the Chief Information Officer and a documented configuration management plan. <clears throat> so the program management office responsibilities are uh, program administration, uh, directly responsible for it, providing oversight, management, and resources, uh, engineering, NCP operates and maintains. I think that number's a little higher now, but roughly 89 radios at 76 different sites. The program management office is responsible for all the system hardware and software configurations and responsible for configuration change management and ensuring the configurations remain as built and installed. Uh, operations always ensures the operational capability of the system through consistent monitoring, assessment, testing, and evaluating. All FNARS radios should always remain on their assigned FEMA networks. They're not for use, meant for use on any other uh, networks or frequencies. Training, uh, the program management office offers scheduled quarterly webinar training to all FNARS users in February, May, August, and November. Individual training sessions may also be scheduled upon request. Those uh, training invites go out to people that work at the EOCs and are, are involved in the communications for the EOCs and FEMA employees that, that are involved in communications as well. Security and property management, program management office ensures all FNR system components adhere to the Department of Homeland Security and FEMA standards in consultation with the information system security officer. GMO submits the system security package for authority to operate. The GMO is responsible for tracking all the FNR's equipment, accurately reporting the location, as well as shipping and receiving equipment for contract repairs or purchases. And the PMO is also responsible for all the maintenance on the equipment. Um, there's a regularly scheduled maintenance plan and uh, for any issues, questions, or troubleshooting, FNARS users have, have the information to contact the PMO for, uh, for help. Okay, the FNR system consists of two directed networks. There's the national radio net, the NRN, 
that provides FEMA headquarters with large scale nationwide survivable communications with the FEMA regional offices and the federal regional centers. Network command and control functions are assumed by the National Net Control at Mount Weather. Uh, capabilities, again, are unclass voice, data, and telephone interface. The regional radio net, or RRN, is, act excuse me, is activated to support communications efforts resulting from incidents contained to a specific region of the country. Uh, the network C2 functions are assumed by the local FRC. Capabilities are the same on class voice, data, that's a text data, and telephone interface. <clears throat> the test and exercise program on the national radio net, uh, that's conducted twice monthly, and uh, reports are, the results are reported to the PMO. Uh, Mount Weather serves as the national net control for the national radio net. And the goal is to maintain operator proficiency and ensure continuity of FNR's operations by transferring primary net control functions in event of failure. The regional radio net, the FRCs perform the net control functions for their respective regional nets. And all regional nets are also tested twice monthly. The results are reported to the program management office. And the goal there is also to maintain FRC and state operator proficiency and ensure the functionality of the regional radio net. Yeah, the national radio net encompasses the 10 FEMA regions with Mount Weather serving as the primary net control and five FRCs that can act as alternate net controls at least once, at least once annually, a contingency, contingency test is performed in which net control, usually at Mount Weather, is assumed by one of the alternate locations and the test is conducted from that alternate location. So the NRN, the National Radio Net, involves the following participants. So uh, again, each of the 10 regions, it's uh, the MERS units, which is uh, the mobile communications units, uh, the MERS MOX, which is their, their headquarters, all the federal regional centers, and all the FEMA regional offices are the participants in this net. Excuse me one second. Sorry about that. Okay, the regional radio net participants, um, again, incidents that affect a limited area of the country and they prompt FEMA leadership to activate a regional radio net. And the five FRCs are located in Maynard, Massachusetts, Thomasville, Georgia, Denton, Texas, Denver, Colorado, in Bothell, Washington, and they uh, all host FNR's equipment, enabling them to function as net centers for their respective regional radio nets. The regional radio nets are organized into the following groups of participants. So on the regional radio net, um, I'm not gonna read all these, but I'll leave the slide up for, for a little bit, but you can see which FRC has which uh, states or territories in their regional radio net that they test twice monthly. And so uh, the testing purpose and procedures, the FNR's test and exercise program represents the minimum requirements to ensure a high level of operator proficiency, given the strategic importance of FNRs as an essential backup communications method. With communications between states, territories, MERS, region offices, FRCs, and or FEMA leadership have been or are likely to become disrupted. The FNRs national net and regional nets consist of an automatic 
automated link establishment or ALE connection attempt followed by a voice test. Then tests are conducted for message data and telephone interconnect. Advanced notification of an FNARS test is disseminated to participants. The notification includes the scope of the test, participant responsibilities, the net control authority, the test participant windows, and points of contact. Participants are required to notify the program management office prior to the test if they're unable to participate or require modifications to the proposed timeframe. <clears throat> test results are sent each week after test completion to aid in timely report compilation. Here's uh, the National Radio Net map. Uh, the little star there where everything comes out is Mount Weather in Northern Virginia. And then this shows uh, all the regional offices, the MERS, and uh, FRCs that participate in that net. Mount Weather usually being the net control. In the regional radio net map, um, this shows the different FEMA regions and uh, the stars show you the FRCs in those regions and who, they, uh, who they're responsible for in the regional radio nets. Uh, as you can see, there's not a FRC in each region. So like for example, region uh, eight is also doing the states in region five. And, uh, that happens uh, in a few other areas as well. So again, that is tested twice monthly as well. Okay, uh, HFALE. Um, ALE is automatic link establishment. This is a, a big feature to the, the FNARS radios. Um, basically, uh, it enables the system to the station to make contact or initiate a circuit between itself and another HF radio station. Um, <clears throat> so the FRCs are, are set to sound and sounding is simply a 10 second ALE transmission of your ALE address on each channel in the scan list. Um, and then all the all the other radios are, are hearing that sounding and they're putting together a, essentially a constantly updated database of what, what kind of signal quality they are getting from that FRC on each of these different frequencies as it goes through the frequencies. Uh, I don't have an image of the, the FNARS interface here, but essentially, it, it's a pretty simple system. For, it's, I shouldn't say simple, but it's easy to operate. Um, it's all icon based, and it's uh, you know with this ALE, it's pretty much as simple as the operator is going to double click the station they want to connect to, and it's going to use that uh, that LQA data that it's gotten from sounding to determine what the best best frequencies are to talk to that FRC on. And we'll start with those frequencies first, trying to get a, a good link. But, uh, yeah, a lot of the, not definitely not all, but a lot of the people at the states that, that do operate the FNARs have, have a minimum level of training. And so we try to make this system as, as easy to, to operate and, and use as possible. Um, so your ALE address, <clears throat> excuse me, is a unique address. It's similar to a phone number or a username. And on this network, it's assigned by the program management office. Each station's got a, a unique address. Okay, this is a, a basic equipment uh, overview of what a typical FNARS equipment looks like at, at a state EOC. Uh, on the right-hand side, you got the radio rack, which is a, a thousand-watt Rockwell Collins system. Um, 
You got the power amplifier. You got a, a UPS system in the rack as well. Um, although, again, these are mostly at state EOCs that also have their own battery backup and or generators as well. Then on the left-hand side, that's a, a typical console. Um, the system is the radio rack is often in a server room or you know somewhere else where the console will be in a watch center usually. Um, so at the console, you've got the the PC, and you've got uh, you know an audio panel there, and then a monitor, and that's where the the operator will control the radio from when when it needs to be used. Okay, uh, in conclusion, FNRS provides an essential emergency communications capability to federal, state, and territorial governments in times of national or regional emergency. And the system's primary role is to provide communications capabilities to senior federal leadership, enabling them to maintain C3 under all circumstances to ensure continual performance of the national essential functions, primary mission essential functions and mission essential functions. And that's, uh, that's the end of my, my presentation here. Um, and that is my branch chief's email address on there. If uh, any further questions that I can't answer or wanted to follow up with him for anything. But, uh, I'm also on the call, so. I'm sorry. Thomas also won tonight. If you can't answer, oh, okay, great. Yeah, you both got you both got, you both got the, the privileges to do your thing tonight. Okay, you want to lower your desktop there? You're, you share your desktop. We make it easier for you to see what's going on here. Oh, um, would stop sharing my desktop? Yeah, at the top of your screen, you should see a red uh, button to close your desktop. The one that says stop share? Yep. Yeah. Uh, All okay. right. Cool. Right on. Okay. What we got for questions here, folks? Well, I don't see hands up yet, so uh, Barry, go ahead and hit the... I hit... has his hand up, but then there's a whole bunch of questions in the chat. Okay, go for the chat. Okay. Uh, well, Steve asked a question, and I think that he answered this. Does FNAR still use the ITU STANAG protocols for digital transmissions? And is FNAR still using NVIS antennas and a one kilowatt transmitter? I think you've already did that in the beginning, but I'm not sure about the first part. That was uh, ITU STANAG protocols. Yeah. I'm sorry, Steve. <laughs> I don't know that I can answer the question about the ITU Steneg protocols because uh, that's I'm not exactly sure what that is. But uh, yeah, we're still using NVIS antennas and, and 1,000 watt transmitters currently. Yes. Um, again, we're using the, the U.S. antenna products 1942. That's it's our big NVIS antenna that we like to put in at the states. Okay. And Dan from California wants to know if, if FNR is unclassified and how was that beneficial for the mission? Uh, yeah, FNR is unclassified. Um, and how is that beneficial for the mission? Um, I, I mean, FNR is again is in a lot of state EOCs where we can't really vet the people that are. I mean, obviously the EOCs do their own vetting and everything, but um, it's not, you know, it's being unclassified. It makes it so, so it's easier for, uh, for uh, multiple operators and, you know, operators, whatever the EOC can provide to, to operate the radio. We don't have to worry about, uh, you know, vetting these people or security clearances. Okay. Aaron from Oregon wants to know if FNR is channelized in a similar manner to HF shares. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I know HF shares exist, but I'm not real sure 
how it's channelized or how we're similar or different from the Okay, let's see. Does every state EOC have an FNARS connection? And what about territories and dependencies? From Aaron and Oregon. Uh, yes, sir. Every state EOC has an FNARS system. Uh, territories and dependencies, that is definitely a goal, but I believe there's still uh, American Samoa and maybe one other one out there that for various reasons we still don't have a system up and operational in at the moment guam we do have a working system in guam yes go ahead steve okay uh, mike wants to know from idaho is are the connections encrypted and is the c is that the c3 reference uh no it's it's FNARS is not encrypted. Uh, it's over HF on encrypted. Okay, that takes care of all the questions in chat, Dan. I think there was a hand up. I'm not sure if it does anymore. Okay, well, I don't see hands up. So we want to put their hand up. <laughs> Dan, you always want to put your hand up. Oh, wait here. Mike's trying to do something here. He doesn't. Okay, Mike, go ahead. Unmute yourself and come on. You sound like no, no. You sound like a Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what sound like a tape. We've got to speed it up really fast. It's encrypted. Uh, I think you better put your uh, question in chat. Yeah, really. yeah. yeah. Mike, you're not making any sense. We cannot understand anything you're saying. Please put it in chat. Uh, Doug, this is Steve Waterman. Uh, the question I guess I had was, you mentioned text messages. My question is, do you also have a protocol that will allow binary transfer of like uh, spreadsheets or anything else uh, that would interface with uh, SMTP mail or cell service or what have you. The the protocols that I'm talking about are the ones that the government used called STANAG, which are uh, derived from the ITU uh, standards. And that used to be a huge big box at the bottom of your, bo of, of your system, but I haven't, paid much attention to it lately and don't know whether that data capability is available still. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, you know, that obviously exists, but that's not part of the FNARS program. We don't have that requirement or, or use that. Um, again, we do have a basic text messaging thing, over, okay. but nothing more complicated than that. Thank you. Yeah. A uh, national special security event is, uh, is some something the government uh, designates. It's generally things like uh, presidential inaugurations, State of the Union, uh, presidential conventions, uh, could be, uh, you know, visiting dignitaries, you know, basically events that could possibly be exploited or targeted that, uh, you know, would be major events. Super Bowls, uh, the United Nations General Assembly meetings, stuff like that also. Yeah, I don't know about Super Bowl. Um, you know, more like places where lots of political figures are, are at. Okay, that's all the questions, Dan. Yeah, again, FNR is, you know, it's it's a last ditch uh, government communications thing. It's not really for the public. I was kind of surprised to be tapped for this. Um, and I, I tried to throw this presentation together for you guys. I, I tried to put some information in there that I could share about it and that might interest you. But uh, again, unless you work at an EOC with this equipment or you work for FEMA with this equipment, you're 
probably never going to uh, have any interaction with it. And everybody forgets that the primary mission of FEMA is continuity of government. You know, we deal with it on the lower level with all the other stuff FEMA deals with, but the continuity of our government is their primary mission. And it's not usually talked about a lot, but that's what it is. And Jim has his hand up in chat. Jim, you want to go ahead and ask your question? Hello, Jim. Jim, you're going to need to unmute him. I guess he, he dropped his hand, so. Oh, I, I dropped it. I thought he was coming on. Okay, Jim's got to stand up again. Jim, go ahead and take it. You got, you're you muted there, Jim. Uh, if, you, if you're on a PC, if you press your space bar, that would serve as a push, push to talk button. That helps you get unmuted. Or you can type your question in chat. Okay, yeah, Jim, you're going to have to. You can't get unmuted there. You're going to have to put it in chat. Okay. Nothing showing up in chat yet. I see a couple comments here about the ALE. And yeah, I, I'm. I'm aware that it exists in other systems as well. I just, I don't know how common it is in, in you know, ham radio or whatnot. But uh, again, it's something we use in, in FNARs and, and it's, it's really cool because it makes it real easy for people to, you know, almost uh, people that have little or no experience operating something like an HF radio. It makes it uh, real simple for them to connect to other radio systems. Uh, in the network because it's constantly building a database of uh you know link quality on different frequencies with uh with the hosts okay jim posted in chat he says he's heard that they will be an upgrade to the fnars radios pretty soon i don't know if you could talk about that or not oh yeah where do you hear that from um yeah, we've uh, we've been testing uh, the next generation of uh, of these Rockwell Collins systems or Collins Aerospace systems. Now, um, yeah, we've been testing that, and we're you know hoping to roll that out in the near future. Um, it's it's a big project that's going on right now, but uh, I can't give you any dates on that or anything yet. Hopefully soon. But again, unless you're, you know, at a state or involved in FNARS, you know, you're not, not even going to know. But yeah, there's new, new equipment on, on the way, new radios. And Aaron says he's been using Ion2G for ALE, and it's really nice software, and it's lot, not limited to Mars or Shears users. If anyone's looking into trying to trying out ALE, look up I O N two number two G. Okay. Any more questions out there? One more in chat from Steve. If and when you have hardware issues such as an antenna being destroyed, etc., what process do you use to fix things? Contractors are people directly from a FEMA office. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, we, we do a mix. Um, we, we, have contract, we have contracts for um, maintenance and repair. Um, if, if it's near to, you know, to Mount Weather or convenient to us, sometimes we, we'll just go out there and do it ourselves. Um, you know, we're all, most of us have, uh, are trained to, you know, field maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, but, you know, occasionally if it's on the other coast or something like that, it's often easier to just uh, tap a contractor to, you know, we've got contractors we've worked with for a long time that know this equipment better than us in some cases. Um, so, yeah, we, we'll do a combination between contractors or our own staff. Okay, thank you very much. That's very helpful. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, everybody here. And let it bid for three months and see how the lowest bidder is, and that's how they get things done. Um, <laughs> Tom, uh, I want to thank uh, Doug and Tom for doing this. Uh, uh, it's late in the East Coast, but uh, when this thing comes out, uh, people can listen to it at their leisure. There's a lot of uh, more interest in this among the volunteer resources now under the uh, OXI banner, under, under the volunteer resources uh, banner. And um, a lot of people have questions, of course, they're not here tonight, but a lot of people have questions. And depending upon who you talk to and what state you talk to and when you talk to them, uh, you get uh, a ver variety of answers. So there's nothing like hearing it from the horse's mouth, and we're grateful for that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, thanks for having me. We're all good in chat, man. Okay, and uh, I don't see any hands up. I'll give it another run here. Anybody else got any hands to show? No hands to show, no questions. We'll be wrapping this one up early tonight, guys. This is okay. <laughs> I agree with Barry. <laughs> okay, unless we got something else, I am going to say 73 is 31. And for those non amateurs, 73 means best wishes. It's a CW, uh, well, we use it in everything, but originated in Morse code. CW means best wishes. So for those non amateurs here, that's what the 73 is. And I'm going to wish everybody a 73. And uh, we'll see you next week, maybe. <laughs>